Wait till you see the video we're about to play. MSNBC host Joe Scarborough suffering a live meltdown after realizing the horrifying truth that he never wanted to know or even admit. Stacey Law, Liberty Writers News, gives us the background. Once again, Trump is winning. Yes, we recently reported about how Trump had led the RNC to raise $75 million in the first six months of 2017, but it's getting even better. MSNBC hosts are starting to realize it now, and it's just like watching election night all over again. Watch now Joe Scarborough, completely detached from reality, claim the GOP is race baiting. The GOP is race baiting. And then come unglued when he realizes the truth. You're going to love it. Take a look. And you can actually see it in the numbers. Of course, the, the Republicans, again, I, I think a lot of us are doing what we did in 2016. I mean, we spent all 2016, I'm not talking about you, but just around this table, talking about how bad things were going for the Republican Party, how they were embracing race baiting, how, how their, their, their policies uh, were not positive or optimistic, and they ended up taking over everything. 2017 has been even worse. We're all shocked by what happened in Charlottesville. We're shocked by how inept uh, Donald Trump has been as president of the United States. And yes, he has low, low numbers, but we were, while you were talking, uh, we were putting up, uh, we're putting up numbers like cash on hand. Uh, Republicans have $47.1 million cash on hand. The Democrats only have $6.9 million cash on hand. And you look at the money that they have raised in 2017. Republicans have doubled Democrats, 86.5 million to 42 million. In just about every case, it seems when a party is out of power, people get energized and they get focused and you really see things change. But again, as we, we keep going, even Senate races, for some reason that I just can't explain, are breaking Republicans' way. Which, what does that say about the Democratic Party right now? And What it says about the Democratic Party, Joe, is that identity politics isn't working out too good for fundraising. And it's pushing people away from the Democrats. It's also, it also says that Dems are still so drunk on their own lies, they can't even admit when they're wrong. So they're going to hold hands and just drive off a cliff like Thelma and Louise. Yep, it also says that the patriots that elected Trump, they're still excited about him. They're so excited, they want to support him with their hard-earned money. The GOP now controls all three main branches of government. With the amount of money the RNC has managed to raise, that could continue for a very long time. Of course, we do want Republicans in Washington who will get things done, who will stand with the president, who will work with the Trump agenda, make America great again. We're tired of people like Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan who are simply whining about Trump and the expectations that we have for Congress. Okay? We, we're tired of people like Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan is a traitor to Trump. We want the swamp drained. Remove these scumbag elite establishment GOP roadblocks from our mission to make America great again. And if you agree with that comment, drain the swamp, write that in the comment section below, hit that share button so everybody can add their support in the comment section. North Carolina, this is the latest in the fight to remove Confederate statues from towns and cities across the country. We have heard that on campus there may be more protests there this evening. So we're watching that at UNC, and we will be bringing that to you as we um, see what unfolds throughout the hour. So those scenes follow this from the Charlottesville City Council meeting last night, which was an intensely heated environment. Watch what happened in there. Statues are coming down overnight in Texas. Lexington, we just had a murder and a Nazi rally in our town. So the results of all that, the city's Confederate statues will be removed. But Victor Davis Hansen is warning that it could set a dangerous precedent. Here's what he wrote. When we wipe away history at a whim, why in 2017 and not, say, in 2015 or 28? 
we better make sure that our targets are uniquely and melodramatically evil rather than tragically misguided. Trace Gallagher, live in our West Coast newsroom with how this has spread coast to coast, sometimes in the dead of night. Hi, Trace. Hi, Martha. You know, the debate over whether Confederate symbols represent hate or heritage is raging in a number of states. In Bradenton, Florida, the county commission ordered a Confederate statue to be boarded up, and that prompted dueling rallies where flags were burned, insults hurled, and even a few protesters arrested. Watch this. One side said the statue had been co-opted by, co by white supremacists and needed to be removed. The opposing side argued the statue simply honors those who fought for their beliefs. Outside the Howard County Courthouse in Elliott City, Maryland, a Confederate memorial was taken down in response to the violence in Charlottesville. For the time being, the statue is being donated to a local museum and might be added to the County Historical Society's Civil War collection. In Columbus, Ohio, at the Camp Chase Confederate Cemetery, which early in the Civil War served as a prisoner of war camp, a Confederate statue was vandalized. The bronze figure of a Confederate soldier had the head torn off when vandals tried to topple the statue. In Baltimore, a 225-year-old monument commemorating Christopher Columbus was vandalized. A video posted online, which we cannot show you, has the statue being destroyed and a narrator who says that Christopher Columbus initiated a centuries-old wave of terrorism, genocide, rape, and slavery. In the nation's capital, the Jefferson Memorial appears to be safe for now, though it will get an update to address the, quote, complexity of America's third president, including his history as a slave owner. And finally, in Houston, a man was arrested and accused of trying to blow up the Dick Dowling Confederate Monument. Dowling was hailed as a Confederate war hero in Houston, serving in the Jefferson Davis Guards. Martha. Trace, thank you very much. So here with more, Dana Lash, host of Dana on The Blaze TV, and John O. Caldwell, a Republican political analyst. Welcome to uh, both of you tonight. You, I just want to put up a quick poll here. ABC Washington Post, do you approve or disapprove of Trump's Charlottesville response? 56% say that they disapprove. 28% uh, approve. 16 had no opinion. And here is uh, Vice President Pence on this earlier. Watch this. Seeing people destroy public property in the name of any cause, it's just simply unacceptable. John, do you agree? I absolutely agree with uh, our vice president there. I think he was a much needed and welcome voice to this conversation as a, a leader who understands the sensitivity of race in this country. This has become a very divisive issue on all sides. I have a friend of mine, Connor, a 28 year old white male who's a very vocal Trump supporter who came to me recently and said, look, just because I support Donald Trump doesn't make me to be a racist. And I know the left has taken it in that direction. I know that the media has taken it in that direction. I know that just because you want to see these statues up doesn't make you to be someone who supports slavery. So we have to acknowledge that. But in addition to that, I wonder history. Yes, it's history. And I believe it should be in a museum. Why would we give out participation trophies to somebody who lost a war? I mean, isn't that what they say snowflakes do? I, I just don't understand that piece. But I really do agree with what uh, Vice President Pence said, which was allow the local government to rule on that. And I believe that's the right answer for this situation. Uh, I mean, you look at these statues and they present the history of the deepest battle in this country, our deepest eternal battle in this country. And we know who won and we know why they won. And this marks that process, that evolution that our country went through. Dana, your reaction? No, I think that you, you touched upon something right there, Martha. It does show this, this, this process that our country went through because ours is a shared history, a very tragic time yeah. and very amazing time as well. If, if, if community members collectively decide that they want to do something about these monuments, they want to take them down, they have every right to do that as members of that community. I mean, that's what freedom's all about. They can choose to erect them and they can choose to take them down as well. But this idea that we're just going to go out and start busting up public property, 
I think that does set a very dangerous Absolutely. precedent. And, and and I think the bigger question is too: at what point do we draw the line? Where do we draw the line? Do we draw it at the Washington Memorial? Do we draw it at Lincoln's Memorial? I mean, where do we draw it? Do we draw it on the men whose images are on our currency? Because if people mm -hmm. want to get rid of that, they can actually go to my website at DanaRadio.com <laughs> and send them to the address there, Martha. If that's <laughs> You'll accept their money. That's so nice of you. Um, John, <laughs> you know, pick up on Dana's question. Where does it end? At this point, it really doesn't. I think that in order for us to really have this conversation, it's necessary for us to begin to listen to one another. But, but I'm this, saying, with, you know, with George Washington, yeah, with Thomas with George, Jefferson, with, with, should they stay? Should the memorials to both of them I think stay? The, the memorials you're talking about in, in mountains, obviously, Mount Rushmore and other places, I think those should stay. It, there's no way to use public costs to try to take those things down. When it comes to statues that are, in my view, celebrated in these local communities, and I view that as being what it is, um, and as used, public funds are used to maintain those, I think those, that's another question for the public. Local government should be involved in that, in that scenario. I don't think that people should be destroying pu public property. It isn't a condign move, and th folks that do that, they should be arrested because it's a destruction of property. Yeah. We can't take things into our own hands, and we must obey the law and do things legally here in this country. Dana, quick mm -hmm. last thought, and then we got to go. Yeah, absolutely. Amen to that. Again, I mean, we have some bad times in our history and good times. And, and I think that we can't refuse to acknowledge history because those who re refuse to acknowledge it, they're doomed to repeat it, Martha. And I think that there's a better way to go about this than public destruction. For Thanks, sure. you guys. Great to have you.